Thank you so much for allowing me to crash in on your Zoom worship gathering. I am very much enjoying being part of this. As Bradley was saying, you guys probably don't hear enough preaching from bald white guys with beards. So I uh, decided to recruit me to come in. As the video said, my name is Wes Tillett, new executive director of LUM as of April 1st. And I wanted to say, first off, just a thank you to St. John's Episcopalian Church. There have been decades of partnership between LUM and St. John's. I know the food pantry was a huge ministry together. But even looking at the program today, I see the community Thanksgiving meal. I see the Jubilee Christmas. The partnership continues between St. John's and LUM, and I, I'm really grateful. So sincerely, deeply, thank you for your good work. I wanted to talk a little bit about the First Thessalonians 5 and the Matthew 25 texts for today. Be woke and stay awake. In the texts from Matthew 25 and 1 Thessalonians, we are called to keep a bigger eternal perspective so that we can see more clearly in our immediate earthly circumstances. Jesus is returning. Jesus will bring accountability and salvation. And that should cause us to stay spiritually wide awake right here, right now. With our eyes on the future, it gives clarity in the present. We live in an age where it is very hip to be woke. You heard this phrase, want to stay woke, be woke. This concept of being woke is the idea of being aware of injustice and fighting for justice, particularly when it comes to racial injustice. And I believe as followers of Jesus, we are called to be woke. We are called to fight, stand, do whatever we can to bring justice. The kingdom of God is justice and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, according to the book of Romans. Yes, we are called to be woke. But I think the passages today call us even more to be awake. We need to be awake, awaiting the return of Christ and looking at our own brief lives and the reality that we will have to get an account to God someday for the life we have lived. First Thessalonians 5, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. Since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. When we are really awake, we realize the brevity of life and the reality of our ultimate accountability to God regarding the life he has given us. And that accountability will bring joy to those who are awake and ready and pain to those who are not. That's what Jesus underscores in this gospel lesson. God has given every single one of us worldly talents, talents, time, treasure, ability, commodities, community, connections. And we are to leverage these talents in such a way that God is honored and others are blessed. We build into that kingdom of justice and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And when the king returns, the servants must give an account of what they did with what they were given. We're called to be woke and stay awake. A little side note, I think it's kind of fun on Jesus' story here on the talents. I believe Jesus had and still has a rich sense of humor. And in this story, I think there's some first century Jewish humor going on that is completely lost on us 21st century Americans. The context is just completely different. But I believe this character, this lazy servant who hides his talent in the ground is a comical character. For Jesus' Jewish audience, everyone in that crowd would know the classic description of God, a description that was given to Moses in Exodus 34, 6, and is often repeated through the prophets and poets of the Old Testament. And that classic description of God is this, the Lord, the Lord, compassionate and gracious, 
slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Everybody in Jesus' audience know that's, knows that's who God is. Compassionate, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. And so this lazy servant claims that the king is a harsh man, gathering where he did not sow and harvesting where he did not scatter seed. This guy has a completely mind-bogglingly distorted view of God. He's a classic example of bad theology leading to bad behavior. And this lazy servant sits on his asset and does nothing. He's a joke. And the Jewish punchline comes when the master tells this slave he should have at least put this talent in a bank and collected it with interest. Now, for a first century Jewish person, you cannot practice usury. You cannot collect interest. So everybody knows this is an illegal thing that the master is asking the servant to do. So Jesus is kind of saying, okay, if you think I'm bad, think the master is bad, then you should have done bad. So at least a little dishonest good could have resulted. So it's not laugh out loud funny to us 21st century Americans, but I hope you can kind of see the humor that I think might've been going on in this context. And Jesus, as a good teacher, follows up the punchline with kind of a gut punch of reality, of sobering words that says that there is no excuse for any of us. Even our distorted ideas of God do not get us off the hook when it comes to giving an account for the very brief life God has given to us. The story, of course, asks the question of all of us 2,000 years later. What are we doing with what God has given to us? Our lives are so short. Time is ticking away. Christ will return. Our lives will come to an end and we will have to stand before God and give an account for what we have done with what God has given to us. Matthew 25, 25 assures us of that. And go on and read the next story about the sheep and the goats. Another so sobering story from Christ. Are we taking the risk of investing our worldly treasures and time and talent into making an eternal difference? into building the kingdom of justice and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, or not? Now, if St. John's Episcopalian Church is anything like the statistically normal Episcopalian congregation, I am speaking via Zoom to a bunch of five talent people, people God has endowed with incredible education and opportunities and connections and wisdom and wealth. Elsewhere in the Gospels, Luke 16, 9, Jesus exhorts people to use worldly wealth to make eternal friends. My question for all of us, a question I think Christ is asking us through this Gospel lesson, are we doing that? Are we taking what God has put in our hands in this brief life to invest it into things that matter and that last? Are we thinking about the future, the long future, in such a way that we are seeing the the present most clearly. There was once a gymnast who got up on the balance beam during a competition, wrapped her arms and her legs around the balance beam and just hung on there for dear life. After a couple of minutes, she let go, got back down and then did her pose. She went to her coach who was just completely baffled by this performance. And she said, Explained to the coach, like it made total sense. I didn't want to fall off and embarrass myself. Or do you think the coach was excited about this performance? Did he, he was like, oh yeah, great. No, the coach was like, what are you doing? You've got to take a risk. You've got to fall off and get back on. You've got to try. I mean, you might get deducted for falling off, might get points taken off or falling off, but you're gonna get no points for just standing there and hanging on for dear life. I think this is what Christ is counseling us. We get no points for just hanging on for dear life and playing it safe and comfortable. We have to take calculated eternity-minded risks of investing our talents into what truly matters and truly lasts. St. Basil the Great, 
lived from 329 to 379. He once preached this. If you want storehouses, you have them in the stomachs of the poor. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. I love that. Our storehouses, one of the ways we can effectively store up treasures in heaven and invest in what matters and lasts, it's in the stomachs of the poor. It's by meeting the basic human needs that are all around us. Now, Lafayette Urban Ministry, I think, is one way that people can invest into the poor. I'm not going to stand here and say that by giving your time, talent, and treasure to Lum, you're automatically storing up treasure in heaven. But I, I can say when you give time, talent, and treasure to Lum, you are helping the poor. We are focused on tackling basic human needs and uplifting the people of Greater Lafayette. So Lum is one good option for investing time and talent and treasure into what matters. But of course, it's not nearly the only option. I think the more important matter, the more important question to consider this morning is the question prompted by 1 Thessalonians 5 and Matthew 25. What are we doing with the talents God has entrusted to us during our ephemeral stay here on earth? May God give us wisdom to be both woke and awake. May God give us grace to be faithful stewards of every ounce of time, talent, and treasure that he has given to us. May God give us vision to understand eternal reality so we can make the most of our earthly existence. And may we hear at the end of our journeys those longed-for words of the Master, well done, good and trustworthy servant. Enter into the joy of your master. Thanks be to God.